It's Monday night. I was cooped up in my car and in my office uh, all day. subdivision crossing a uh, big field and then I'll head into another subdivision there I'll definitely go down the hill um, into the river Cooley but uh, there's a part of that subdivision situated in the floodplain so I could walk back, back northward along the river and take the usual climb out that I do. And it, it might just be what I do, I don't know. But, um, at least patch. Um, but either way, I'm just out for a little bit. And, uh, I just need to hike. Got my ankle weights. And, uh, check me out or anything like that. ankle weights on but the sense was why am I not carrying a ruck why am I not rucking this walk or this hike or what have you um, and I paused to think about it for a minute I didn't you know, stop I kept walking but mentally I paused <laughs> and it occurred to me that um, that is probably the most natural have, one of them anyway, that um, it's a probably um, something in the human evolution that um, our bodies have been designed to haul some things uh, with us as we go around. We need, you know, tools and our belongings pass, foraging groups pretty much have to carry all their stuff as they move from one campsite to the next. I have some dogs, travel helping out, but um, still, to me, it feels like there's an absence of weight on my back, and that I should be rucking, and, you know, I don't think any real attention has been given as an outside of the military to the usefulness and the healthfulness and the naturalness of rucking. We should be rucking. We should be jogging, running, but we should also be rucking. That's a, a natural thing 
that um, human beings have probably done forever and that we don't do enough of today. I know when I take my uh, students out once a year or so for backcountry hiking, the first day that backpack is pretty heavy. <laughs> you go into day two, it feels a lot lighter. You go into day three, and it's not a big deal at all. It's just part of your body almost. Um, so yeah, rucking. I'm gonna give some more attention to rucking. I'm going out hiking around, and not that I never have. Um, oftentimes, I carry about a 60 pound camera pack. So my body's actually pretty used to rucking. But um, recently, I've been not using my whole camera toolkit as often. And so, like this evening, I left home with just a little side satchel with this video camera. And uh, now, I'm wishing I had some more weight on my shoulders. Um, so next time I do this, for sure I'm gonna ruck it. Difficult to appreciate at night snow cover and uh, all of this it's pretty much all covered up but right now I'm at the site of an ancient um, stone effigy um, an effigy made from boulders um, that are uh, some of them are probably uh, glacier till others look like they come uh, like they've been weathered by the river and um, brought here uh, to this particular site and um, set up in the shape of a turtle spoke bee so it's a turtle effigy any appreciation of it of how it looks at least in this context um, but this is right on the outskirts of one of the neighborhoods here one of the subdivisions and a um, chain link fence has been put up surrounding the site um, as a kind of protective device, I guess. The chain link fence is about um, four feet high, I'd say, and it uh, does not have a lock. And actually, I don't mind that, that it's unlocked. Um, or that the fence is low. Um, honestly, my opinion is that there should not be a fence. And um, I think that it's unfortunate here in uh, Alberta and indeed in, in North America in general that ancient sites like this um, have to be protected in some way because people will vandalize them. I don't understand that really. I mean, I do in one sense. Um, but let me give you another example. I went to Scotland and visited some of their ancient sites and there were no fences. Um, there were, there were pictographs and petroglyphs and, 
and um, burial mounds and all this kind of stuff. Sometimes right in the middle of a neighborhood, there were Stonehenge-like monuments, huge um, sun effigies, um, sometimes right in the middle of a town. And they just basically would make a park of the place. Um, there was no sense that they needed to uh, have anybody on guard or have any kind of, you know, real protection for the site because it's inherently protected um, by the culture of the people who would not, um, who would not uh, defile it and who would in fact um, be very upset if they found anybody defiling it. And that's not the case here in North America and the reason that's not the case I think is because these sites belong to the indigenous peoples of America and the now vast majority are immigrants um, who would rather who would rather perpetuate the myth that um, the indigenous peoples of North America uh, were destroyed and disappeared and killed off and all of this stuff when in fact they're <laughs> absolutely still here and I'm part of that community and um, and the languages are still here the ceremonies are still here the ways the practices it's all still here um, that turtle effigy that I was just at marks this area as um, a place where tobacco planting was grown, done in the past and there was a big ceremony at one time associated with the tobacco planting. That's what that effigy is about um, because the turtle's bowl, his uh, body, was used um, in the ceremony to, as, the, as a receptacle to mix the tobacco seeds and the fertilizer and then left as an offering so that's the connection between the turtle and the, and the uh, tobacco but yeah these people here that live right here on this big neighborhood here they got I don't know if you can even see this but um, they got no clue they got no clue at all what that thing is why it's here and rather than put any real resources into educating them or even like kind of inducting them into the ways in North America um, which at least some of them got to be interested in um, instead of doing all that put up a fence and so to me the fence is a bad thing now I'm headed out the coolies. Not sure where I'm going to go from here, but just enjoying the walk. All right, I've seen some kind of animal here in the distance. You can hear the geese moving. Um, they're moving between river sites. They must have been bothered by the coyotes, but I've come across an animal here. I suspect it's going to be a porcupine. <clears throat> just by the way it's moving. Oh, yes, it's definitely a porcupine. And he's on the run because he knows I'm coming. Hey, Porky. Hey, Porky. What you doing? Yeah, he's definitely afraid that I'm going to uh, try to hurt him. So he's got his quills up, his back turned to me. He was running for um, 
these bushes over here. Some choke cherry stands. I don't know if you can see it, I'll show you though. And right here, he's making a run for these choke cherries. And uh, he knew I was on my way. And then when he saw me getting close to approaching, then he uh, really made his run for it. Just keep turning his back to me. There he goes. There he goes. Come. There you go, Porky. Gonna get to the choke cherries. Get through there. He can move through bushes like that a lot faster than me. And it's just more protection for him in addition to his quills, which are already pretty damn good protection, except against like a human being, um, because I certainly have uh, taken the lives of porcupines in the past uh, for a meal. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother him anymore. He's already freaked out enough and I'm not really interested in scaring animals. But yeah, some some action going down in here. I wish I could show you guys the scenery. I haven't ever been in this particular coolie draw and it's uh it's very scenic and beautiful um even at night. But uh I tried aiming the camera around to see if it would be able to uh, focus in on the scene and it's not doing it so almost down to the river I might just make it there I don't know could be running into a cliff here pretty soon so <laughs> I may or may not actually get down to the river but I'm pretty damn close either way still look around for a rock pick it up and bring it to the uh, area where I'm building a cairn. I'll show you this rock here, hoping the camera will focus on it. Um, this rock is shaped, um, when you look at it from a little distance, it looks like a bison calf laying here. This would be its head up here and then it tapers down and this is a large rock um, it's about three feet long at least a meter long and um, I've seen these in many many coolies set up just like this um, and it's basically again this is an ancient um, site what this was was the Iniskim, a buffalo stone, and this is to draw um, bison into this coulee for hunting. If they see this rock from a distance, the bison will believe that it is a calf and they'll come to check it out. And then they'll get uh, drawn into this coulee. Yeah, I just thought I just heard some uh, coyotes, but now I think it's just some regular old domestic dogs. <laughs> um, yeah, I did run into a cliff. I wasn't able to get down to the river proper. Um, I'm on my way back up, but I still got a lot of hiking to do to get to the top of this coulee. I decided to go ahead and shut off the pedometer because I'm back in the neighborhood. I just got to walk up the street here and I'll be to my house. Um, I went about just close to four kilometers. It took me an hour 27 minutes and uh, a leisurely stroll over snow drifts and ice and up and down um, vertical coolies and all that. Um, but anyway, I thought I wanted to mention, when I came into the neighborhood just now, I hit like this wall of sewage 
stench. It wasn't, it wasn't strong, but it was there. And um, of course, I didn't notice that smell before that this neighborhood smelled like sewage. And this is one of the nicer neighborhoods uh, in the city of Lethbridge. Uh, it smells like sewage. If you walk away from it for an hour um, on a clean, crisp winter night like this and come back in, you smell the sewage. Imagine what it would be like if you went off and lived um, outdoors in nature for a year and then the massive massive uh, wall of strange odor you would encounter walking into a neighborhood like this or even worse into one of these houses oh my god <laughs> the chemical mixture and the, and the funk and the, and the shit smell oh. anyway I was glad to take a walk. I'm home now. Um, didn't, you know, really uh, strain myself or anything, but I just needed a walk and that's what I got.